Good morning, viewers. Welcome to Salty Dogs USA. This is the first video log on, on my new YouTube channel. And if you've seen the basic description that I've written, we are um, about boats and boating and cruising and fishing and maintaining and fixing things that break. So I would say from the beginning that most people understand the word boat to be a noun because it describes something that floats. But boat is really an acronym and it stands for break out another thousand. And I can assure you that over the years that I've owned this boat, I have had to break out many thousands of dollars. But if you like boats and boating and fishing and all the things that go along with that type of life, it's all money well spent. So I thought on our first video that what I would do would be to show you the boat, take you through a little bit of a walkthrough about it, and um, give you some descriptions. So without um, further ado, let's get with it. Okay, so here she is. This is our 2004 Contender 23T. The T is, stands for tournament. The boat is actually 25 feet 3 inches in length, has a beam of 8 feet 6 inches, a dead rise of 24 and a half degrees. She holds 175 gallons of fuel in a single fuel tank and is a pretty decent offshore hull. So we have taken it out into the Gulf um, in fairly um, lousy conditions and it has worked um, um, quite well for us. So let's take a look around and we'll just go down this way. The hull is a dark blue. It's actually um, a gel coat called Lily Ram. Uh, Mid-watch blue is uh, the, the actual gel coat. The boot stripe is all grip Cordovan gold. And so as we go further back, as you can see, the um, boat is named the FV Lisa Marie, fishing vessel Lisa Marie. And as you may have surmised from that, or might surmise from that, the uh, other person who is the co-owner of this boat with me is Lisa Marie. And it was quite appropriate to actually name the boat after her. So, um, moving back a bit, the boat is powered by twin Yamaha F-150s, four strokes. These are the original engines from 2004. They have roughly 1,450 hours on them. And uh, right now, as you can see, the cowlings are off of the boat, um, off of the engines, rather. I take them off while she's under storage in this, in this shed, just so that um, any vapor, water vapor, fuel vapor that might be inside and trapped under the cowlings can just dissipate and they can dry out. Um, I just find that to be a better solution for us. And if back here, as you can see, the cowlings are sitting on a mat underneath their covers. I had these cowlings refinished uh, at, a, at a marine refinishing shop uh, about two years ago. This is another one of those thousands that I had to spend. They were originally in fairly, I mean, they were in functional condition, but I'd say they were, you know, they had some cracks on them and scuffs and things and fading and the decals were, just weren't very pretty looking, so we had them redone. They're in great condition now and really, really look shiny and, and uh, basically brand new, and I intend on keeping them that way. So as we move along the back of the boat, um, the trim tabs, as you can see, are the Lenco. Uh, I've actually removed the covers for them. Uh, one of them actually went missing somewhere along the line. This one on this side of the boat we still have, um, and I was able to order another one from Contender but it's, an, it's a blank, it's a white blank, and it needs to be painted and striped. And at some point, I'm going to bring the boat in to have some minor cosmetic fiberglass 
worked on, but as of right now, I just haven't um, had the chance to really, really get that. So, um, as you can see here, these four screws are where uh, we had a set of tuna tubes. Um, the tuna tubes are basically, you know, just suck raw water, ocean water, and they're just two black tubes, and it's basically take something like um, hardtail jacks or something, you put them in there, and it rushes water over the gills. It's basically just for bait. We took them off because we don't use them. Uh, but right here, as you can see, this is the vent, overflow vent for the freshwater holding, for the freshwater tank. And um, the boat holds, well, I'm not honestly certain exactly how many gallons of fresh water it holds. It's at least five, but I have a suspicion that's probably closer to 10. Whenever I've run the, the, the fresh water out, just to change it, it seems to be to run for a very, very long time before it finally runs dry. So as we move forward, um, you can kind of see here, this is the uh, overflow vent for the fuel tank. And um, whenever you start seeing, when you're fueling the tank, and this is where you, the, the fuel fill is, um, if it starts to spit out of here, that tank is full. So um, it's a good little device to have. Um, so as we go forward, and you can see um, this is um, back to where we started. So uh, I think the thing to do now is to go ahead and get up in the boat and we'll go forward from, from that point of view, um, see what she's got. Okay, so here we are up at the bow. And um, basically, as you can kind of see, the bow is a fairly wide um, a gunnel, and uh, this is a really good area. We fish off the bow a lot on this boat, and uh, this, it's got good um, freeboard. You can see it comes up to my mid, sort of my mid legs. It gives you a good stable platform to fish off of, and also this wide uh, bow area is very good for diverting a, a spray away from you, and, and so the boat rides um, fairly dry. It's actually very dry and we were certainly appreciative of that. So up here at the front, this is the running lights for at nighttime running, pop right up. And of course it's got your red port light and your green starboard light. Um, and that's activated by a switch at the helm. And then here is a pop-up cleat, as you can see, for docking and other things. We also tie off our rig hook to this when we're out hanging off a drilling rig. And then here is the anchor locker. Um, we've got 400 feet of, of rope and our Danforth style anchor. The aluminum caps that you see on here are something I added to the boat. Um, I wanted to have that as extra protection in case you get, you know, anchor slips out of your hand or something before it was just fiberglass on top and it's easy to chip up and crack. These are our lines, our dock lines. And so, um, and that's basically that. Then. Two speakers for the audio system in the front. We have several others. You can also notice that we have rod holders right up here at the front as well. More rod holders here. We're toward the middle section. We added the uh, large um, a ruler so that you can kind of measure your fish. The center box is the main fish box. Um, can't recall exactly how many gallons it holds, but it's large. So as you can see, it goes a pretty good ways back up in there too. So it holds a lot of fish and a lot of ice. You can easily put 400 pounds of ice in this thing. Um, so we, we put a few fish in it too um, over the years. So nice to have. And it holds ice and it holds cold very, very well. So I'm really surprised at how well insulated it is. The side saddle boxes we use just to put things in as you can see throw cushion which is um, mandatory to have at least one and then extra life jackets we um, actually wear um, automatic inflating small autom automatically inflating vests when we're on the boat those are not in here and then some buoys some um, protection at the dock another throw cushion nothing much to see and then this is the console so we open this up and inside of here is where our batteries are located we have three 
Group 31 AGM batteries. We have the audio amplifier for the audio system and then also the battery switches here. And you know, this is just the backside of where the chart plotters and the VHF radio and the head unit for the stereo are, plus all the wiring for the switch panel and all the wiring for the gauges. You can see that's all basically terminated all back up in this area right here. So on the side, we have three um, additional rod holders with the corresponding little holes cut into the top so that you, you can have the tips of your rod go through and then also some additional space for for tackle, which I find to be a bit ridiculous because if you have rods there, you can't get to them. Same thing on this side. And obviously the speakers are, I just put those in um, very recently as a matter of fact. So, so this is um, the, the top. I just um, put a new spreader light up here. This one goes from white to blue with the, with the flip of the switch on the, on the, on the um, switch panel. Ice and glass is the type of enclosure that is very typical for contenders back in the day when this was made in 2004. And you can see here the helm area. So the boat, when we bought this boat, obviously it was um, owned by someone else. Um, it came with Furuno, older, much older Furuno um, equipment. It had a chart plotter, a fish sounder, a you know, sonar, fish finder an old radio and um, really wasn't sufficient for what we wanted. So I went ahead and changed out that equipment for Garmin uh, equipment. Um, these are Garmin 7608, the XSV um, models. I consciously decided to go with the 76 series over the 86 series because this was available in an eight inch uh, screen and I wanted that particular size because I felt it was just overall a better fit for the size of the, the, the space that we had to work with. The panel that it's mounted to is a half inch a King starboard uh, that I had um, cut specifically um, with, the, with the radial edge around it. And um, I cut the panel myself with the, the templates that Garmin provides. So my um, belief is you measure twice or three times or four times and then cut one time and it came out pretty good I'm, I'm generally pleased with with the results so as you can see we have our gauges this is for the port motor um, temperature and the tachometer um, this also mount, um, keeps track of your batteries uh, how much fuel burn you've got here on your fuel management you can see and then the starboard motors um, um, uh, temperature gauge as well you can kind of see the switch panel here that controls the nav, it, the underwater lights, the live wells, the bait wells, the for one, two bilge switches for the two bilge pumps that we have, salt water wash down, spreader lights, overhead lights here, fresh water wash down, an audio system, and an accessory switch. These are the um, switches for the trim tabs that keep the boat trimmed um, if you activate that. These contenders tend to ride a little bit on the high side in the bow, and so we usually put about Maybe hard to see, but they have like little lighted bars on both sides, and we usually run somewhere around two to three um, bars on the trim just to keep the bow of the boat down and, and the boat running in a level way. Obviously, this is the keys here, the dual binnacles that operate the engines, and that's it. So the other day, I installed this, um, this helm pad, this contender helm pad that finally became in stock. At uh, The uh, contender has a, a partner that does their sort of official accessories, that's clutch apparel, and um, they, these things had been out of stock forever, and they finally came in stock, so I, I, I jumped on one while I had the chance. Um, this is the cleaning post here, the helm seat, and I just refinished the interior of this box. It was getting kind of ratty looking, you know, you throw your stuff in there, and, and uh, just after a while, it just gets nicked up and, and just doesn't look so good, so I, I went ahead and put a finish in this with this um, total boat wet edge, which I found to be 
bit difficult paint to work with really, um, not terribly happy with it. We used to use a West Marine product called Sea Gloss, which I, I really did like how it, uh, how it went on and, and, um, and, and the way it dried. This is a little bit more difficult, but after some time it finally came out okay. Up above is the electronics box where we have the display for our Furuno radar. This is the one thing that we did keep was the uh, radar system. This, um, actually, this head unit the, for it, I just bought this off of eBay uh, maybe within the last month or so because the one we originally had, uh, the LCD screen had completely just burned out and it was impossible to even read anything. So uh, when this was fairly inexpensive and it's in remarkably good condition, I'm very, very pleased with, with it. And so um, we went ahead and hooked it all up and and uh, it, it seems to work pretty well. I have to take it out uh, into, you know, on the water to uh, just double check it and make sure everything is, is, is working properly. But I have no reason, from what I've seen so far, I have no reason to believe that this isn't going to work um, uh, at, other than um, perfectly. So I just replaced the, um, the gas shock that keeps the door open. The one that it replaced um, was busted and the door was just gradually just sort of all down and you couldn't you know it's just terrible so really don't know why I put up with that thing as long as I did um, that's um, that's new as well so and as you can see here um, the hose this is the raw water wash down which is activated by this switch right here that says salt water um, then correspondingly over on this side of the boat this is the freshwater wash down hose it comes out of the freshwater tank handy to have them, um, especially on a hot summer day if you want to rinse off. Nice to have that. So back in the back we have the live well which is very pretty deep. It goes in, I can't recall exactly how many gallons it holds but it's a fair amount, there's no doubt about that. And then back here is just more fish boxes. You can use them as fish boxes. We use them as storage. As, as I've mentioned all of the fish that we catch we just basically keep in the main box up in the front so on this side in the bag here is um, some emergency equipment our flare guns a spare uh, fire extinguisher you know all the things that you're required to have on the boat in case you get stopped or boarded by the coast guard or the wildlife people you know you can show them that you are in compliance and so that's what's on that side and then on this side is where we keep First aid gear, um, tourniquets, bandages, uh, you know, band-aids, alcohol, everything in case someone puts a hook in them or, you know, has some sort of an accident because that can happen on boats. Um, that's where that is all. Easy to get to. And then in the middle, this is the, the bilge access. So as you can see here, I've got, let me put this down. That bilge pump that you see down there is really a secondary one um, that on a manual switch the other bilge pump it's harder to see it's farther back there is the one that's on the auto float switch um, this is where we also have our fuel uh, water separators each side one for each engine and then the air mar this is the in-haul transducer the, the black um, item that you see down there this is the M265LH Chirp in-hole transducer. Really works brilliantly well. I couldn't be happier uh, with this thing. The other one is an old Airmar. I think it's a B77 Triducer. It measures basically speed, water depth, and water temperature. It functions, and I actually do have it connected uh, to the system so that if you want to know basically what the water temperature is, you can switch over to it and get a reading for that. So that the reason I kept it um, and then all a bunch of wiring that you know come from the engines and also from the um, trim tabs and so forth all come through here come through this area so that is basically the top part of the boat oh, the last thing will be just to have a look at the trailer because I had to order this um, shortly after we we wound up buying the boat the other thing I would point out though before we get down is I'm changing the spreader lights. These here with the original ones, they're halogen and are 
really consume power. You know, you're running this boat off of batteries basically and the last thing you want to do, you know, is, is have these lights on for an extended period of time and they just drain your batteries much more quickly. So we're going to LEDs and this is the same exact type of light as the one I just showed you on the front. So it operates off the spread of light switch, which is this one. Um, you switch it, turn it on and it would go to whatever uh, color the light was at the time um, that uh, you last used it. And then if you switch it off and switch it on, it will cycle over to the other color. So it's a white and blue configuration. Um, the problem I'm having at the moment is, and you can't see here, but the wiring to this goes through the tube here on the T-top. And there's a 7 8 inch hole that it comes out of. They had these old grommets. You can kind of see the grommet here. And they're in really terrible condition. So to find an outdoor rated grommet, and that part of it was really important. I didn't even realize that grommets are rated for indoor and outdoor use, but apparently they are. And to find the exact type of grommet really took some digging. I finally got it on that website with McMaster Carr. They had the exact ones, but unfortunately they said it was a month before they could ship them. And I'm still waiting for them to come in. As soon as they do, I will finish getting that installed, tightening all of this up. You can see it's, it's still loose and then getting this one removed and, and changing that out. I'm also going to be ordering a uh, new uh, overhead light, one from Taco Marine is almost a, a, a match for this, a little bit different, but this one's going to come off. It's got too many burned out LEDs and it, it, you can't change the color, right? So they offer one from Taco that does white and blue to match these and that's what we're going to be getting. So basically that's it. I guess the one other thing I could do is, before I get down, step up here and this is the top so this is our radom this is a, a magnetron an old style magnetron radar radar and the um antenna uh, vhf antenna um and these are the outriggers uh, attachments where we have the outrigger poles and you could see them there and they need to be really refurbished up you know the type of fishing we do is mostly just for reef fish we don't really troll anything like that so we've never used them and um, so far the top is uh, really held up well it's in it's in good condition still so we don't really have any need to have that changed and um, that's about the size of it so let's get down go over that trailer so this is a trailer that I had built specifically for this boat in 2016 when we first came to see the boat from the young man who was selling it the trailer was really a hang up for me because it was just in really terrible condition. It had no brakes, and in fact, it had had brakes at one point, but they had completely rusted out. And a boat this size that weighs, well, this whole rig weighs probably closer to 7,000 pounds. Uh, then the trailer itself is probably another 1,500. So it's a heavy, heavy load to tow. And uh, you want to have dual, you know, twin disc brakes back here like we do on this trailer for the extra stopping power. And, and believe me, when, when you're trailering in traffic and all of a sudden have to bind up on the brakes really, really hard, it, it's worth its weight in gold to have, um, to have a, a disc brakes. Uh, these are surge brakes. I, I would probably do it differently if I were ordering this trailer today. And I would probably go with an electric over hydraulic system. But suffice it, we didn't do it and this is what we have. Now all the hardware on this trailer is all stainless steel so you're not going to see any rusting on this trailer at all. It's, it's aluminum and stainless uh, together. These tires are the Goodyear Endurance tires are new. I just had put these on a whole new set, uh, the, the, uh, the hubs. I rebuilt myself this past summer. What a job that was. And as you can see this is this is it. So when, when it was obvious that the trailer had to go uh, after it had caused us quite a bit of trouble. I looked around at all the typical places that you would probably look for trailers and um, you know the big names out there right the Ameritrails, the Sport Trails, the Continentals we called them all to get quotes as to about what it would cost to have a trailer built for this boat and I was really just disappointed at, at the amount of money that these guys wanted for these trailers. Now I'm not saying anything negative about them they, they all build excellent quality trailers and I know a lot of people really love them, but 
you know, like the sport trail, for example, uh, the quote we got from their dealer was uh, $12,000 for that trailer, and there was just no way that I was going to spend um, that kind of money. So I did a lot of research and finally came up with this company. It's a small trailer builder out in the Tampa area, and he took, you know, all the information about the boat, exactly what it was, and, and um, asked me exactly what I wanted on it and how I wanted it, and, and he, built it, he built this trailer custom for this boat, and the trailer tows this boat extremely well. It tows it very smoothly. I've had no problems with this trailer now, going on five years with it, uh, just couldn't be happier, and the cost of it was less than half of what um, some of the other quotes that we were getting from Continental and Ameritrail, and specifically for a sport trail. Uh, this little checker thing is a sticker that activates the uh, backup um, assist um, on the truck. The F-150 has that knob that you can use to back up your trailer. I only use it when we're putting the boat in the shed because it's nice to be able to see exactly where you are on the camera and the backup camera and make minor little adjustments with the knob. But uh, other than that, you really do need to know how to back up your boat the old-fashioned way. And so this is basically it. And this is just the other side of it. Um, if, if I ever have to get into this situation of rebuilding these hubs again. I think I'm just going to replace them and go with those uh, tie-down engineering vortex hubs to avoid the necessity of having to rebuild these quite as often. And the other thing too is, is these old style dust caps, as you can see, can get kind of greasy. They just uh, leak out grease and, and uh, I wanted to have some really nice rims put on the boat, on the trailer, but uh, Terry over at the Ace Trailer Place, uh, he was pretty adamant he didn't want it because they were just going to get really terrible looking at any rate and, and, and so it was just no point in, in really having them. So, so that's basically where we are. Um, that's the tour of the boat as you've basically just seen. So we are, as I said in the introduction at first, um, um, you know, into, into fishing and into cruising and into boating and all this maintenance that's going to go on with this thing in, in the future. Um, so come along for the ride. We uh, would appreciate you if you subscribe to us. And obviously, if you want us to be, if you want to be looped in, hit the notification button. And obviously, hit the like button. That's very important because that will run. A YouTube has an algorithm that if you hit the like buttons, even if you hit the dislike button, it's going to help direct our um, uh, channel to other similar channels like this and it does tend to give you help get you a little bit better exposure to other people in the boating communities who might be interested in, in watching um, uh, as we go forward. So that's the extent of it today. Thank you very much for watching. We'll be back with uh, some more content as I mentioned, some more maintenance. The next thing I'm going to do is get these lower units off. All the parts are in uh, to rebuild the water pumps and that's going to be the next project. I got the oil filters, the water separators, all that's in. I'm going to be getting the oils, all that fluids changed, and um, that'll be a project that I'll be working on next. So stay tuned. More to come. Thank you. Have a good day.